The Roman Empire developed a mechanism to execute people. It was called crucifixion. It was a cruel, painful, and shameful way to die. But that's how they treated their criminals, their insurrectionists, and anybody else who might defy them. Almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus was crucified, but he wasn't crucified as a criminal. Even the one who judged him, Pilate, said he found no fault in him. The concept of crucifixion has come to us when you'll hear people say, well, I'm being crucified, which usually means that they're being attacked or judged uh, improperly. The scriptures talk about crucifixion as well, but it has an entirely different view towards crucifixion. So come and listen to this message on Crucified to see what the Bible says about it. One in which I've been picking short, simple scripture that's easily memorized. And my hope has been that just like we started in this series with Romans chapter 1, verse 17, how that impacted and changed the life and trajectory of Martin Luther. And we've gone through that the righteous shall live by faith, that there's now no foundation for those who are in Christ Jesus, uh, that, that we may know that we have eternal life, that we are to be anxious for nothing, that we are to rejoice always. All of those hoping, as I've delivered them, that are simple, short scriptures, so that, again, easily memorized and easily brought to mind when the occasion comes. And it is my hope and prayer that these verses have changed you. Now, I don't want you to raise your hand as if they had, because I don't want to get depressed. But my hope springs eternal. And if none of these verses has yet touched you. I hope this one does. Because I'm going to present it probably in a little different fashion. He talks about crucifixion. And when we talk about crucifixion, we usually think about almost 2,000 years ago when Jesus, our Lord, was crucified. And that he experienced all the pain and anguish and shame that that entailed, and he did so for our benefit, that we might receive forgiveness and mercy and grace, and that we might be called children of the living God. And all of that pain and shame he bore so that we might be made whole and well. And it is appropriate that we Praise him for that. That was not the end of the story. For once he had given up his spirit, they buried him after having crucified him according to the scriptures, having been buried according to the scriptures. He rose again according to the scriptures and is going to return again as he has stated according to the scriptures. But even all of that is still not the end of the story. There is some st- other things that need to be discussed when it comes to being crucified. So if you have your Bibles, and you should, turn to Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and we're going to take a look at another couple of verses in Galatians, and then another one in the Gospels. And so I'm going to read the entire verse, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to comment on each portion of it. I have been crucified with Christ, And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I want to go back. Notice this. I have been crucified with Christ. That's past tense. Paul is not saying, I'm hoping to one day be crucified, or that I'm in the process of being crucified. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. And I want you to notice that he uses the word crucified. He could have said, I have died with Christ. But his crucifixion, Jesus' crucifixion, should be our crucifixion 
When we baptize people, we say that we identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But it's more than just identifying with that death, burial, and resurrection. We, too, need to be crucified. It is easy, and we, again, we ought to, and, and it feels like I'm, you're going to misunderstand me. What God did is unimaginable, that God would give his son for a person like me and give it in such a way that he did that he was crucified. But we always like to talk about his crucifixion, but that it has no impact on us. And Paul said, I have been crucified. Not just I have been died. I have been placed in that position of pain and suffering and shame just as Jesus did. And it's more than just a theological point. Because the reality is, we don't want to give up this life. We want to hold on. We want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And Paul is saying, I have been crucified. Not simply I have committed suicide or I have passed into the never Neverland. He goes, I have gone through that crucifixion, that painful and shameful experience with Christ. With in the sense of more than just he did and I understand it. It's no, I am jointly being crucified with Christ. But he goes, and it is no longer I who live. I'm saying, when I was crucified, I died. But, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The resurrection that Jesus turned about, and, and it's, again, reality, it is historical truth, it is biblical truth, it is truth. But he says, this resurrected Jesus isn't just there in the world somewhere, this resurrected Jesus is in me. So that's why you hear people say, well, that Jesus lives in my heart. It's, it's an easy way to, to call the fact that, it, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. I'm saying, I'm living in this flesh by faith. In the Son of God. I am responding to what he has said and what he has done. My life now is not what I want or what I do or what I desire. My life is now dedicated to not me, but him. And I live according to his word and according to his will. So therefore, I live it now in my flesh. So... I have been crucified in the sense of not necessarily the flesh, but the spirit. And that spirit has been resurrected into now Jesus living in me. By faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. You see, oftentimes the world doesn't get it. They think that we place a bunch of do's and don'ts on each other because that's what religion does. You do a bunch of do's and we do a bunch of don'ts. And we seem to be very good at telling people what the do's and don'ts are. But Paul is saying here, I am living by faith in Christ because he loved me. And he gave himself up for me. I love him because he first loved me. So everything that I do and everything that I say and everything I should desire is because in that response to the love of Christ that I show to him because he's shown it to me. So if Christ loved me so much that he was willing to be crucified for me, how can I not say that I love him so much that I'm willing to be crucified for him? Oh, Pastor Joe, but we don't want to do that. We want all the cool stuff. We want all the neat stuff. We want to be able to walk on water. 
We want to be able to feed thousands. We want to be able to, to do miracles and signs. And everybody say how wonderful of a faither I am because I can do all these things rather than saying, because Jesus loved me and gave himself up for me, I will love him and give myself up for him. We should be saying, I have been crucified with Christ. Now, I know that's really hard because it's really hard to give up control. And it's really hard to die the way that Christ died by being crucified. You see, the Roman Empire developed an extraordinarily painful way to execute people. They either nailed you or tied you to a cross and hung you up there. And the methodology of your death was asphyxiation. You would hang and you would push yourself up so you could breathe until the strain of holding yourself up, your legs trembled and gave out and you would fall down and now you can't breathe. But your body is tired. So you re when your lungs are crying out, I need air, you force yourself back up so that you can breathe. And then you fall back down. And in some cases, it took days for those who were cruci crucified to die. Sometimes it may take you or me a little longer to be crucified and die in Christ, but the process should be that I have been crucified. Now, the process may be I'm still hanging there and I'm trying to hold on, but the process is I acknowledge that I am going to give up this life for him. And in case you're not quite sure that I am got this right, if you'll turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 24. Now to those who belong to Christ Jesus. Okay, if you're a believer, that's you. Now, presently, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Notice again, it doesn't say that you're going to that it's on your to-do list, but that you have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. It is no longer what I want or what I desire or the lust or the passions or even food, drink, or whatever. It is I have crucified the flesh. What Paul means when he says, I have crucified, I am crucified with Christ, and yet I live, but not I. Christ lives in me. You see, Jesus lived and ministered on this earth according to what the Father wanted him to say and do. We should be living our life saying and doing what Jesus tells us to do. We have crucified what we want and live to what he wants. But there's more than to being crucified than that. So again, turn to Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul's saying, no matter what I have accomplished, no matter how great you may think I am, that you may think I'm this excellent apostle and I write excellent letters and I ought to pay attention. No matter what ministry Paul has succeeded in, no matter how many churches Paul has started and helped continue, he goes, I'm not going to boast in those things. Quite frankly, he's not even boasting in the fact that he's been crucified. He's just telling us that's what he's done and that's what we ought to do. May it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Paul is saying, I have now been crucified as far as the world's concerned. The world is no longer my home. 
The world is no longer my priority. The world is means nothing to me because I've died to it. Go to any cemetery that you desire. None of those people in there are interested in on the next computer program or buying the next great Apple product or wondering if they can get a Lamborghini or a Tesla because they're dead to the world. The world doesn't matter to them anymore. And that's what Paul's saying, that we, having been crucified, we should be dead to the world. It doesn't impact us. Oh, sure, we'll vote, and we ought to vote as Christians, this person or that person or whatever. But I'm a citizen of heaven. The world's going to hell in a handbasket. And it wants to go. But I don't want to go there. I want to be with my Lord. So I have been crucified with him. The world no longer matters to me. But then notice what it says also. And I to the world. The world is dead as far as Paul is concerned. As far as he's concerned, he's dead to the world, and the world is dead to him. It just doesn't matter. Because it no longer matters, because he has now placed his faith in the Son of God, and he has decided that he will identify not only with theological implications, but in reality. That he's dead, but that he's alive in Christ. Now, in case you think that, that Paul, because if there was anybody, if you want to be a zealot for, for God, you want to be Paul. Because Paul was always 100% in whatever he did. When he was against Christ, he went all out. He went all out of zeal. He, he, tried to, he was happy when Stephen was stoned to death. He was happy when other Christians were killed. He was happy and participated in seeing that they were arrested, so much so that he decided to go to Damascus, which wasn't even in Israel, so that he might persecute the church. I mean, he was totally dedicated in what he did. But then when God changed him, and when he saw the resurrected Jesus, he was 100% all in for God. No half measures. So when Paul says, I was crucified, he meant it. And he lived it and he died it. But Jesus has told us the same thing. If you'll turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 9, starting with verse 23. And he, that being Jesus, was saying to them, all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus says, if you want to follow him, if you want to come after him, then it doesn't say that you that it's one of the first steps or that you ought to deny yourself. That is what you must do. And not only must deny yourself, but you must take up your cross daily and follow him. Well, why does he say daily? Because Jesus was crucified once, died once, and rose again, never to having to die or raise again. One resurrection was good enough for Jesus. However, we keep seeming to rise again after our crucifixion. We can say, okay, Lord, I'm going to deny myself. 
I'm going to crucify myself, and I'm going to follow you. The world's dead to me, and I'm to the world, and I'm going to crucify my passions and desires, and I'm going to follow you. And after you hear this message, hopefully that'll be your attitude. Then Monday morning you'll wake up, and your old self will rise again. And you got to crucify yourself again because you keep wanting to rise again. And it is, unfortunately, human nature. We want what we want when we want it. And it comes from birth. Let me give you an example. A little baby is born. When the little baby wants to eat, he cries out to his mom. And he cries, and if you don't answer, he cries the louder and the longer. Because the baby wants what it wants. Now, it's, it's a good thing it wants food, but that's what it wants. It doesn't say, you know, mom had a hard night. And I know my tummy is a little, it's, it's aching and whatever because I want to eat. She had a hard night. So I'll, I'll wait a couple of hours, let her get some more rest, and then I'll let her know that I need to eat. No, no. I don't care, mom, you need to, to sleep. I'm hungry. And then when it, he or she does her business, I want to be clean. And then say, well, you know, dad doesn't do a very good job at it. That's okay. I want to be clean, dad. You just do it. Because you don't want to hear me cry until mom gets home. No one as a baby ever thinks about anybody other than themselves. And that's kind of what we start out with, and it's kind of what we do. I want what I want when I want it, and you ought to want what I want to give it to me. But Jesus tells us that we must deny ourselves and take up our cross to be crucified daily. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. He tells us, you have a choice. You can live now and die forever. Or you can be crucified now and live forever. Your choice. What do you want to do? Now, unfortunately, all too many people in the world are very short-sighted. They want right now. They want immediate gratification. And unfortunately, in the church, a lot of times, we want immediate gratification. So we'll try to do things like defer our desires and gratification and do and serve other people. So we will as Jesus would say, wash people's feet. And we wash people's feet, and their feet just keeps getting dirty. And we wash people's feet, and their feet just keep getting dirty. And after a while, they don't even thank us for washing their feet. They just expect it. See, a person who is alive to their own desires, well, you don't appreciate what I'm doing, so therefore I quit. No, no. You, you deny yourself, and you follow me. So you, if you lose your life because you are doing all these other things, then you're going to have eternal life. It is not a matter of results. Jesus washed Judas's feet, but he wasn't with him. Sometimes you have to do things that doesn't accomplish anything other than to demonstrate that they're not a part of you. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? This is an excellent question. And, 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 and my kind of statement of this is I've never seen a U-Haul trailer attached to a hearse. You don't take it with you. The only thing you can do is send it on ahead. And it's not the gold and the silver that you send on ahead, but the good works that are appropriate to being rewarded at the Bema seat. And this is a verse I wish wasn't there. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory 
and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. There are no secret believers. Now, fortunately, he didn't say afraid. He said ashamed. He's ever ashamed of me and my words. There are churches out there who want to deny the words of Christ. They're ashamed of those words because they're not comporting with their view of the world and society. They're ashamed. Because Jesus is a bigot and a homophobe. No, his words are truth, not his truth, truth. He is the truth, the resurrection and the life. That is who he is. So if you're ashamed of his words and him, then he's going to be ashamed of you. When he comes and notices, when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Can you imagine that? No, you can't. We can barely understand glory to begin with. But every time we see on earth people confronted with the glory of God, they are changed. Moses was so changed that his countenance shone. But it would start to fade when he was further away from God. So he would have to cover himself either to keep people being distracted with the fact that he's glowing like a light bulb or that he's fading and seeming to dim out. So can you imagine the glory that will happen when he comes, the glory of him and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Sure. They can take our lives, our physical lives. They can make our life difficult. They can deny us things. But if we are dead to the world, they weren't important anyway. You can't kill a person who's already dead. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And not me, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live for Jesus Christ. And all God's people said,